Okay, here is a Venn diagram question that has um, caused a few scratched heads. Okay, um, right. First, let's just review what a Venn diagram is. And a Venn diagram is a way of using sort of these, these circles, these overlapping circles, to represent data, to represent some information that we've collected. And it might be easier if we can imagine a situation that um, that makes a little bit more sense to us, all right? And also how I find a lot of children um, find it easier to imagine is Im imagine your school playground and that somehow you have got a really good bird's eye view of the school playground. So you're looking down onto the school playground and the teacher has got some nice um, bright coloured ribbon and has used that to make some circles. Now I'm going to um, use my coloured pen here and imagine there's this nice bright coloured ribbon is put round here and that is going to represent the number of children who really like um, doing maths at school. Okay so this is maths all right so that they really really like maths and then there's another colour ribbon and this is going to represent all right this is a ribbon that is going to and all the children that stand inside this ribbon are the children who really really like to do English and it would help if I spelt English correctly there we go and then this is a further circle all right and inside this circle are going to stand all of the children who really, really like science. All right, so we've got these three giant circles of ribbon and the teacher says to the 50 children stood on the side, please go and stand in the circle that represents the subject that you really, really like. Okay, so imagine you've got um, 15 children run and stand here. So one, two, one, two, three, four. And if I put the pen on correctly, it will work better. Okay, there we go. Hopefully that's, oh, that's looking quite giant there. All right, let's see if this works. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So imagine there's fifteen children stood here. These are the children who like, who really, really like maths. They're also the children that don't really like, they've chosen not to stand inside the science circle and they're not standing inside the English circle. Then we have another five children, one, two, three, four, five, who've decided to stand in the bit of the circle where the, that overlaps the maths and the English. So can you see how these five children are stood inside both of these circles? Okay, so these five children like both maths and English. And then we have a further two children over here who say, well, yes, they like maths and English, but they also really love science. So they, can you see how this bit overlaps all three? And they're saying that they like all three subjects. Okay, then there's 10 children have gone into this part of the circle, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10. And they are the children who say they really, really like English but it seems they don't like science quite so much and they don't like maths quite so much. So they're stood in the bit of the English circle that's only English. We've already talked about these five children who like both English and maths, but there's three children here, one, two, three, who are saying by standing in the bit that overlaps science and English that they like both science and English, but they're not standing inside this circle. Can you see that? So the children here are the ones who like um, science and English, but not maths. And here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven children who say they really, really like science, maybe not so keen on English or maths. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight children 
who really like science and maths, but not, but they're not standing inside the English circle. Okay. So hopefully that makes a bit more sense. You can imagine all of these numbers as representing children standing in a way to represent what it is that they like. All right. So we have these two children here in the bit that overlaps everything. All right. So if we were asked which children like maths and science, OK, we can say, well, all of the children who are stood here all right, this is the part that represents the overlap between science and maths. So we've got eight, nine, ten children stood in this overlap all together. It doesn't matter that two of them also like English, all right, but if we were asked who likes science and maths, well, all of these children like science and maths, all right. We have five, six, seven children who like English and maths, um, and we have five children who like science and English. And again, these two children here who say they like everything. OK, so hopefully it makes it a little bit easier to imagine if you just think of these giant circles, how they overlap. Where would you choose to stand if you were asked a similar question? And hopefully that makes a little bit more sense as to what all these numbers represent. OK, I'm going to um, rub some of this out. OK, so because we're actually not talking about English or science. And I don't want to get into a muddle. Oh, right. So we'll just take that all out. OK, right. So let's get back to the question then. What is the question asking us? Hopefully we've got um, where we've clarified our understanding of Venn diagrams. Now, we are asked, it says this diagram shows that some Sunday papers read by a set of 50 households and we've got the Sunday Times, the Mail on Sunday and the Observer. So we have got our, our circles out, OK, and there's this blue circle that's going to represent the Mail on Sunday. We've got a pink one. OK, the pink one to represent that's anyone stood inside this circle reads the observer okay and then we've got this yellow one anyone stood inside this reads the sunday times and clearly some people read more than one paper okay there's a few quite a few people that only read one but there's quite a number of people that read two or even three of the papers. So anyone stood here reads both the Times and the Observer. Anyone stood here reads both the Times and the Mail. And anyone stood in this overlap reads both the Observer and the Mail. All right. And these two people in the middle read all three papers. OK, very well informed, hopefully. OK, let's look at the first question we're asked then. We're asked what percentage of the households reads the mail on Sunday and said we have to give our answer as a percentage. What does percentage mean? That's so per cent. Cent means 100. OK, uh, so it means our answer is going to be how many out of 100. OK, so it's an, making a, an equivalent fraction using 100 as the denominator. All right. So what percentage of the households reads the mail on Sunday? So we need to know how many people reads the mail on Sunday. OK, that's everybody that is stood inside this blue circle here. So we've got um, three plus two is five plus this five is ten. Sorry, 15. Sorry, five plus five is ten plus another ten is 20. OK, so. 20 out of the 50 households, 20 out of the 50 reads the mail on Sunday. OK, but um, I need to if I want to show it as a percentage, I need to change this denominator to a denominator of 100. How do I do that? OK, well, what do I have to do to 50 to get to 100? That's multiply that by 
2. If I want to keep the value of this the same, if I multiply this by 2, I have to multiply that by 2. 20 times 2 is 40. Okay, so that's 40 out of, that's the same as 40 out of 100. And that I can show as a percentage. This means 40%. OK, 40 percent means 40 over 100. All right. So what percentage of the households reads the mail on Sunday? 40 percent. OK, the next question, slightly different. We're asked what fraction of the households reads the observer. OK, so although percentages are a special kind of fraction, we're being asked what fraction. So that's we won't have to convert to a denominator of 100. So let's look at how many households reads the observer. This is the pink circle. So we need to look at all of the people stood inside this pink circle. So what have we got here? We've got 15 plus 5 is 20 plus another 10 being the 8 and 2. Right. So 15 plus 5 is 20 plus 10 is 30. OK, so that gives us 30 out of 50 okay and as usual with fraction questions you always need to simplify your answer all right we need to find the biggest number that will divide into both the top and the bottom number so that we can simplify it find an equivalent fraction um, that represents the same value but with smaller numbers okay and I can divide both top and bottom by 10. OK, so if I divide that by 10, I get 3. If I divide that by 10, I get 5, which gives me 3 fifths. So 3 fifths of the households read the observer. OK, what percentage, we're back to percentages, takes all three papers? Ah, well, that's the overlap part. All right, that's this bit here. That's the overlap. And there's two people that are stood in all three circles. All right, what's that two? That's two out of 50. And we were asked to give a percentage answer. So again, I need to convert. Okay, so 50 times two is 100. Two times two gives me four. So that's four out of a hundred. That's four percent. OK, what fraction of the households reads both the observer and the male? So we're back to fraction. I want to look at the observer. That's the pink one here and the male. That's the blue one. It says what fraction reads both the observer and the male? And that's everyone then stood inside the overlap. Anyone that stood inside both the pink and the blue circle. That includes the, the, these two here. All right. It doesn't say exclude people that read the times. It's everybody that reads both of these. So that's five, six, seven. That's seven people altogether or seven households. So seven over um, out of 50. OK, seven out of 50 um, read both those papers, the observer and the male. Now, as before, we should look to see if we can simplify this at all, but we can't. There's, in fact, there's, we know that seven is prime. There's nothing that we can divide into seven and um, 50 isn't div divisible by seven. So that is going to remain as it is. And it's going to be seven over 50, seven fiftieths. OK, right. Um, what fraction reads both the Sunday Times and the Mail? All right, so the Sunday Times is yellow. The Mail is blue. What fraction reads both? That's we want to find out how many people are in both those circles. That's three, four, five. OK, so we've got um, five out of the 50. OK, this time we can simplify it because we can divide both top and bottom by five. Five divided by five um, is one and 50 divided by five is ten. So one tenth. OK. All right.
right. So hopefully you can see that. So this is, remember, you know, when we're talking about fractions, we're talking, this is a, a set and the set has been divided into 50 equal sized pieces. That's why we can regard it as a fraction over 50. Okay, right. I hope this helps.